compelled to forsake your homeland in just 90 days, disconnected from so much that is precious and forced to leave without possessions, plunged into a strange, unwelcoming country of weird food, weather and customs. My name is Christine and my good book recommendation for today is Nima Shah's Kalola Hill. In 1972, Idi Amin purged Uganda of the minority Indian lineage population. He expelled them with just 90 days to prepare in an atmosphere of mounting violence and dispossession. Many of those with British passports arrived practically penniless in the cold and unwelcoming UK. After nearly 50 years, this agonising story has largely faded from public memory until now. Nima Shah's Kalolo Hill tells the compelling story of a family forced to flee to England. Written from the perspectives of different family members, we share each of their distress and apprehension at leaving behind everything they know for an unfamiliar, unfriendly country. Part one of the story is set in Uganda in 1972. We first meet Aisha on the banks of the Nile, halting at the sight of her childhood memories, releasing her hair in a small act of defiance. The visit is cut short by her grisly discovery and her family's deep anxiety to make curfew. Nima Shah expertly conjures up the sights, sounds and smells of Uganda. We feel the powerful heat, delight in the glowing mosquitoes and long to taste the mouth-watering food. She cleverly interweaves the mounting tension and increasing trepidation of each family member against the backdrop of increasing hostility and accelerating events. The narrative is more subtle and nuanced than simply a tale of crisis and identity, with fascinating reflections on how this minority, with British complicity, became more educated and prosperous than the indigenous Ugandans, and found itself, itself the target for accusations of greed and elitism. Part two of the novel is the family's arrival and settlement in England. They step off the plane into icy winter weather, met by brusque officials and luckily sympathy, sympathetic helpers. Nima Shah's descriptions of the living conditions, penetrating cold and unappetising, unfamiliar food enable us to feel the family's discomfort and disorientation. An observation of Asher's the bare branches were like ancient fossils reminded me of something my father recalled when he first arrived in England from Jamaica in the 1940s. He thought all the trees in England were dead. He'd never seen trees without the lush green leaves of his boyhood Jamaica. This book is very well written, poignant and moving, with well-balanced sentiment and excellent characterisation. To many of us, it would be unthinkable to uproot our lives in such a short time and be compelled to move to an unfamiliar land. This novel offers us a very real glimpse of precisely how that experience would feel. Happy reading. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like and leave a comment.